Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Really, really appreciate everyone coming here today and taking some time um, this afternoon. Uh, obviously, a very, very special day for Clemson baseball. Those of you that are here in person uh, and virtually um, on the on the uh, on the Zoom. I see current players. I see some former players um, out around. I see support staff. I see other coaches. I see Coach John Rittman here, our, our softball coach. He's always going to be a great teammate of Coach Backich. Um, I see a former head coach here that, that you all may recognize, Coach Leggett. Really, really appreciate you being here. It's really special. It really means a lot. Uh, couldn't, you, as you can tell from the media turnout, Clemson baseball is a big deal. It's a big deal. The standing room only aspect of this crowd really speaks to that. Um, and for us to have this special day and announce Coach Backich as our head coach is, is really, really incredible. Really want to thank you to the Board of Trustees, President Clements, uh, who've been incredibly engaged in this process. We said from the very beginning that we think Clemson baseball is a top 15 job. And their commitment throughout in support of the program now and into the future for Coach Backich really, really speaks to that. Extreme interest in this position. It really speaks to the special place and special program that Clemson baseball is. During the search process, some of the things we looked for included an established head coach with demonstrated success at a big time program the ability to recruit and develop ball players, a coach of integrity that will invest in the Clemson community and who will connect with the proud lineage and tradition of Clemson baseball. We feel like we didn't have to compromise and all that and it all fell into place with Coach Backage. We got an absolute superstar with Eric and his wife Jiffy and to Colt, Bo and Tempe, welcome to the Clemson family. Clemson baseball got better today and we're so glad you're here. So with that, I'd like to formally introduce the next leader of Clemson baseball, Coach Eric Backage. Thank you. Man, it's, uh, it's great to be back. I can't believe it's, it's been 20 years since I've gotten to say, go Tigers. Uh, but thank you, Graham, his wife, Kristen, uh, for this opportunity to lead and serve Clemson baseball. Uh, thank you to President Jim Clements, the Board of Trustees, uh, Kyle Young, Kevin White, for your support in this process. Uh, to the University of Michigan Athletic Department, all of our players, uh, past and present, their families, seven, seven decades of alumni that joined our team in Omaha, all the fans, uh, I have the deepest appreciation and gratitude for what we were able to accomplish over the last 10 years. Uh, so thank you for an incredible ride. Uh, to the coaching mentors that have helped mold and, and shape the person and the coach that I am today. Coach Keith LeClaire, who I played for at East Carolina, he's the, he's the why and the inspiration uh, to start coaching uh, and uh, a promise that I made to continue his legacy. I don't, I don't remember the X's and the, no, and the O's or the mechanics, uh, but I remember that the confidence and the belief that he instilled. He, he made his players think they were 10 feet tall and bulletproof. He made his teams think that they could accomplish anything. So Coach Leggett, who's here today, uh, instilled the importance of good fundamentals, uh, instilled foundational life skills like discipline, toughness, competing, having relentless positive energy, uh, and doing it all with a care level that is absolutely unmatched. So thank you for giving me a shot. Uh, to Coach Tim Corbin, you know, the value of recruiting excellence to shifting the target onto developing the total person, the teammate, as well as the future husband and father. Uh, that coaching and teaching is a lifestyle, not a job. Uh, very appreciative of uh, the seven years I had with him at Vanderbilt. My family, uh, my parents, uh, who allowed their son to chase a kid's dream and pursue his passion. Uh, Jiffy's parents for, well, really allowing me to marry their only daughter. Um, but the, un the unwavering support the last 17 years. 
our kids, Colt, Bo, Tempe. The most important title I have is dad, and I'm very thankful to be yours. To Jiffy, my wife, she's the, the leader of our household. She's the person I admire the most. Uh, she's also the model of a servant leader. Uh, she constantly puts others ahead of herself. She's a mom of three, but she's a mom of 40 more. And the team is not the team without Miss Jiffy. So we are looking forward to fully integrating our family into the team and the team into our family. I've always put Clemson up on a pedestal, uh, not only because it's, it's a great academic school and because I got my coaching start here, but I'll be forever grateful to be in the right place at the right time. To, and I know how lucky I was to join a staff with three coaching leg, legends with Coach Leggett, Coach Corbin, Coach O'Sullivan. I told Coach Corbin when, when I first got to Clemson 20 years ago that I was going to work the same hours as him. And little did I know at the time what I had just signed myself up for. I was a 24-year-old volunteer assistant coach who got paid in Gatorade bars and t-shirts. I uh, had a $200 a month apartment that had no cable TV, no, no AC, but every single night I couldn't wait to set the alarm clock and get back into the office. I loved it. I still love it the same 20 years later. There's nothing better than helping individual players and a team unlock their potential and achieving more than they thought was possible. 20 years ago, that, that historic 2002 team was 54 and 17, was ranked number one in the nation for most of the year, finished in the top four in the World Series. We had star players like Khalil Green, Jeff Baker, Michael Johnson, with great team chemistry, we had a ton of confidence. Uh, that season I remember hearing some of the comparisons of some of the all-time great Clemson teams, the all-time great Clemson players, names from the Coach Wilhelm era as well as the Coach, coach Leggett era. Guys on the wall like Rusty Adkins, Bill Spires, Billy McMillan, Chris Benson, Jimmy Key, Matthew LaCroix, Shane Monahan, David Miller, Neil Simons, Brian Barnes, Andy Monin, Doug Kingsmore, Tommy Chapman, and more. Since then, there's been even more like Mike Freeman, Brad Miller, Seth Beer, our current eight big leaguers, and the recent individual accolades with Coach Lee. Clemson's been playing baseball since 1896. 126 years, we have a lot of teams and a lot of players to be proud of. The one constant that separates Clemson baseball from everybody else is the traditions that have spanned all those decades. The long white pants, the white cleats, the Omaha on the hat, disciplined teams who are fundamentally sound and mentally tough. Our players will learn this history and connect with the traditions of Clemson baseball if they haven't already. We'll have a goal to add as much value as we possibly can to make our page in the history book one that would be bookmarked for all of time. Whether you played for Coach Wilhelm, Coach Leggett, or Coach Lee, you're not just a Clemson baseball player for the three or four or five years you're in college. You're a Clemson baseball player for life. And there's not a better time to connect all generations of Clemson baseball alumni than right now. This program will be built on the two pillars of recruiting and player development. Recruiting is a 24-7, 365 focus. We'll target the best players in South Carolina, in the region, on the Eastern Seaboard, and in the nation, and in that order. Development is also a 24-7, 365 focus, and we'll prioritize developing the total person first. One of the things I've learned in the last 10 years is that if you want to have a really good team, you got to have a bunch of really good teammates. So we'll build the person, the student, the teammate right here inside this very room, which will be our classroom. Every day we'll start here to be a designated space for learning. We'll teach how to shift the target off of results and stats and scoreboard to the character traits and the behavioral standards that create championship teams. These standards will illustrate how our daily environment is established, which leads to the identity of our team and our culture as a program. These standards will also allow success to happen in the scoreboard to take care of itself. Success is defined by answering 
the question whether each player reached his max potential and did the team reach its potential. I can't wait to help our players and teams unlock this potential in their minds and bodies so they can perform at their best. That being said, results matter at this level. There are five championships to win every season, two in the conference, three in the postseason. One of the reasons a student athlete comes to Clemson, besides a great education, is to compete on a national stage for all five championships. Another reason to come to Clemson is for the Clemson-South Carolina rivalry. We will take this rivalry very seriously and respect it every single day by how we prepare and train. Regardless of championships or rivalries, rivalries will narrow our sights down to the number one. One day, one game, one inning, one pitch, one rep at a time. So we look forward to seeing the Clemson family absolutely pack Doug Kingsmore Stadium. It's one of the best baseball facilities in the nation. Our program will aspire to add as much value to Clemson University and the Clemson Athletic Department as possible. It's inspiring to see how Coach Sweeney and the football program have helped turn the Tiger Paw logo into a nationally or a globally recognizable brand as they've experienced the pinnacle of college football. It was also great to see Coach Noonan and the soccer team win a national championship last season, as well as seeing Coach Rittman and the softball program's ascension in such a short time. Clemson baseball will have the highest goals and expectations I'm proud to be a branch of the Jack Leggett coaching tree, and it's a privilege to serve as the baseball coach at Clemson. Thank you again, Graham, for trusting me to lead this program and be a part of this prestigious institution. We're all in. Go Tigers. started this search was he kind of one of those those guys that you, you set out right away this is this is a guy that I want to talk to thanks David had, had Eric led with that in our first interview we would have wrapped this up a couple weeks ago probably <laughs> absolutely uh, Eric's been uh, top of our list or in the proverbial list of the right hand drawer um, for for certainly these past couple weeks but if I'm being real honest uh, many years um, obviously, with his ties here and the success that he's achieved, um, certainly at Vanderbilt, Maryland, and then Michigan reaching the pinnacle uh, with Omaha. So absolutely was an was a early target. Um, and just as we spent time over the, over the past few weeks of a search, and Coach was obviously still playing um, for a while there, uh, just remained really consistent. The, the thing I'll say, too, about, about Coach Backich, he made it very clear he wanted this job right away. He wanted to be the head coach at Clemson. Uh, and be the head baseball coach at Clemson. And so that made it very inspiring about his desire to be here and therefore our pursuit of him uh, match that. Hey, Eric, uh, Will Vandenborg, um, Clemson SI. I was curious when, when you saw the phone call come in, Grant's calling you, what was your level of excitement? Were you kind of decided to kind of maybe get this opportunity? It was level 10, for sure, yep. Uh, I, again, I've always put Clemson up on the pedestal. Uh, very grateful for the opportunity I had here and feel like I wouldn't be here today without that opportunity 20 years ago. So it was a combination of how I feel about Clemson University and Clemson baseball in addition to Graham's leadership and his vision for the program and just the connection that we had instantly. Eric, what are some of the styles that you like? I assume analytics are probably a big thing for you. What kind of the teams you build, you a small ball guy, you mix it up with you know, it's a combination of both. In, in today's world, players have access to a ton of information and sometimes can get confused with it, and you just have to reduce it down to old-fashioned blue-collar competing. But we are fortunate at a place like Clemson to have all the technology. We'll use it, but we'll simplify it. We'll take the complexity out of it so that our players are understanding in a very simple way how to maximize their development and how to maximize results on the field. Welcome back, Coach. I'm Mitchell Summers with Fox Carolina. Now, Grant was saying the expectations he has for this program, a top 15 program consistently in, in regionals, making deep pushes. Do the expectations at all intimidate you? Absolutely not. I love it. I, uh, I see that as a great challenge. I look at 2010. The program was in Omaha. The 
Coach Lee's first three years, we were hosting regionals. I just don't see any reason why Clemson baseball can't compete for national championships, trips to Omaha, ACC championships, and host the postseason right here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Eric, why do you feel like now was the right time to come back here? What was kind of the decision-making process like for you over the past couple of years? Well, timing is everything, and this the opportunity presented itself. And um, again, the, the, my love and affinity for for Clemson University and Clemson baseball. It's where I started, so it's my first job, and I feel very grateful and fortunate to have gotten so lucky 20 years ago that I would have always been been interested in this and, and uh, jumped on the opportunity when it presented itself. As Eric, how difficult was it leaving Michigan? Obviously, you built something there over 10 years. I mean, what do you tell your players? It's, it's uh, the one thing, well, I told him I loved him, and the one thing I told him is that, you know, relationships transcend geography and location, and just because I'm in a different state and maybe wearing a different logo, it doesn't mean I, I don't love them any less, and I won't continue to be in their lives. I'll always be a coach and a mentor to them, and just because I'm not there doesn't mean that I'm not with them or not speaking to them or not involved with them, and I told them all. I, I, Hope to be at all their wedding, all their weddings someday, and uh, continue to maintain a very strong relationship. That's the hardest part of leaving is the players that you are leaving and the relationships that you have. So it's important to me to continue those. Graham, you mentioned having Coach Leggett here and now having Coach Package tying all that together. Was that important to you? Do you really want to kind of, you know, bring back some some thoughts and ideas and just some focus of, of what it was like, you know, years ago? Yeah, Brad. Thanks, and and it is really, uh, really telling and appreciative for Coach Leggett for seven to be here. Eric's the, the fourth coach for Clemson baseball in 56 years. And so that legacy from Coach Wilhelm, Coach Leggett, Coach Lee, which was a successful championship winning era as well, and now with Coach Backich, that the, the stitching together of that tradition from the head coaching chair, but also all the players, you know, and in talking with all of our coaches, Coach Lee, Coach Leggett, for them and their, 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 their era and their time, Absolutely, a lot of achievement, but but it's the players, and so for our for our alums that are here and former players, that stitching together was really important, just for the health of Clemson baseball and, and Eric's unique time here and relationships really speak to that. Eric, the ACC is a much different place, even from your time at Maryland. Uh, kind of as you step back and thought about the job, knowing what you've just gone through, battling the Big Ten, what this league is like now, how does it change or you approach things now? With I think everything is elevated and the heightened awareness towards just recruiting the very best of the best, developing in the very best way possible. I mean, it's everyone is good in this league. There are no, there are no weak teams in this league. And so on any given weekend, uh, it doesn't matter what the rosters say on paper. It's, it's who plays the best. So it's going to be really important to prepare and train in a way that uh, we're able to put a very, very competitive winning product on the field. Yeah, great question. Um, I don't know if my approach will change in terms of putting the target on developing the total person. It's important that this very room right here, uh, I believe that developing the person, the teammate, the future husband, the future father, the future community leader, there's a trickle-down effect that leads to the results on the field. So I, I would be unwavering in that process of how important the classroom time is. Uh, and then on the field, um, the results won't be any different, or the, the, uh, pr the approach won't be any different either. We'll look to put together uh, the best team in the country that we can possibly field. And in 126 years of, of Clemson baseball history, we, we are yet to win a national championship. And I don't see any reason why we can't have that lofty goal year in and year out. And that's what we'll be striving for. That's how we'll be recruiting. And that's how we'll be developing.